Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help provide context to today's public affairs issues. Since 1979, the Soviet Union, in violation of every convention protecting the rights of a sovereign nation, has tried to impose its will on the people of Afghanistan. Despite the death and destruction brought by the Soviets, the Afghan struggle for freedom continues. Michael Berry, a representative of the International Federation for Human Rights, a Paris-based lawyers organization, has spent almost 10 years in Afghanistan. Apparently, the Soviets had felt that simply bringing in their tanks into the country would be enough to terrorize the population into submission. And seeing that this was not the case, they launched a total war attack. Um, there was a wave of helicopter fire. Parachute troops were landed on the houses. Parachute troops went into the houses and simply shot everybody in them, forcing the population either to run away or die on the spot. Christian Science Monitor correspondent Edward Girardet has made several trips inside Afghanistan and has written extensively about the refugee camps. Uh, I visited numerous camps along the Pakistan-Afghan border. There are now an estimated two and a half million refugees, legal refugees, inside Pakistan and they're still coming over. Uh, the guerrillas leave their families in Pakistan and then groups go back inside, maybe to fight three, four, five, ten weeks, whatever it be, also to, to collect supplies. But I think also they are justified in bringing their families because there's been a lot of bombing going on in the villages. And in some parts, they just cannot survive. The farms have been destroyed, their uh, food storages have been destroyed. And I think this is one uh, tactic of the Soviets to destroy food, to try and burn the crops just before harvest time. And so, of course, what are these people going to live on? They have to leave the country. The world simply could not stand by and permit the Soviet Union to commit this act of aggression with impunity. Fifty nations petitioned the United Nations to condemn the USSR and to demand the immediate withdrawal of all Soviet troops from Afghanistan. Since the Soviet invasion, the few Afghan doctors serving the rural population have fled. Health care services for those who have stayed behind is maintained by volunteer medical teams, mostly French. Dr. Claude Marguerat of Médecins Sans Frontières spoke of what the medical teams have witnessed. And now we are witnessing a third phase in the war crimes, and that is the bombing of hospitals. This hospital is located away from the neighboring village. And as you can see, there are fields and trees around the hospital. The hospital was destroyed on purpose, and the trees were not even touched. The helicopters only went after the hospital. We witnessed a second bombing, which was quite awful. It happened in the beginning of November. The bombing was specifically aimed at our hospital on the day we had planned to leave. The hospital was completely destroyed, the walls torn down, and nothing left inside. It is clear to everybody all over the world that the Afghan people, like others, love their freedom. They live free and they die free. Until now, they have preserved the freedom of Afghanistan with the price of their own blood, just as their fathers did and their sons will do. And I am sure that the Afghan people will regain their freedom and will be a free nation once again. It is an Afghan tradition to fight against any kind of invaders. Uh, right now, they are the Soviets. The reaction against them shows that the uh, Soviets are not bringing them progress. The Soviet argument is, we are coming to free these people from feudalism. But what does this mean? Can one come to free a people with sophisticated combat helicopters, with tanks, with cannons? by bombing villages, uh, killing children, killing old people, killing the innocent. I mean, what kind of liberation are the Soviets bringing to Afghanistan?